Which shoe is better to hoop in? The Nike Kyrie 8 Infinity or the Kyrie 5 Low? Today we're putting the newly released models within Kyrie's shoe line head to head to see how they compare. But really quick, if this is your first time checking us out, feel free to drop a follow or subscribe wherever you're watching. Give this video a like. We would greatly appreciate that. So starting off with the box and the price, the Kyrie 8s get some Kyrie text inside of an oval pattern. And then in the middle is going to be like a sideways 8 or an infinity sign. They pretty much go by either name. But, you know, now switching it over to the Kyrie 5 Lows. These are going to come in a cream or tan colored box with a pretty cool Kyrie design on top. And then as for pricing, the 8s are going to retail for $130, which is the same price as last year's Kyrie 7. And then the Kyrie 5 Low is going to be just under that at $110. So two pretty affordable options just as far as signature shoes go. So doing a quick rundown for the appearance of these shoes and starting off with the colorways. Today we're checking out the Nike Kyrie 8 Infinity Aluminum versus the Kyrie 5 Low Game Royal. So starting off with the Kyrie 8s, pretty much all of Kyrie's shoes within his line have followed the same like mid-top structure, aside from shoes that were made to be specifically low, like the Kyrie 5 low that they're going up against here today. But I mean, with Kyrie's line getting more of a curved midsole, these are going to fall more in line with the Kyrie 6 than the Kyrie 7s that had like a shark tooth design in that same spot. And the wavy heel design is really sick on these two, like it reminds me of the Dame 7 extended play line. And then this specific colorway is going to get an hourglass look to the tongue, so just all around a pretty nice setup. But now checking out the Kyrie Kyrie 5 low. The biggest change between like the Kyrie 5 and the 5 low model was that like floral looking plat patch that kind of ran over the lacing system that the laces actually fed through. It wouldn't really work all that well on a low top design anyway, but like as far as the Kyrie, fo Kyrie 5 low design itself, I actually really do like it a lot. You're going to get like a half swoosh on here for the upper and then the heel pattern with that waves on the back is probably my favorite part about these. It kind of does remind me of this, you know, Kyrie 8 Infinity heel pattern anyways. And then just like the whole shoe itself looks really sleek. Just kind of an athletic looking shoe, but you know, I am definitely a fan of the Kyrie 5 low as far as the appearance goes and the Kyrie 8 as well. But now let's see how, how both of these models hold up on the court. So getting into more of the materials and the performance side for these shoes and starting off with the cushioning on the Kyrie 8s. These have more cushioning packed inside of a Kyrie shoe than we've seen in a minute. Like it is pretty typical for Kyrie basketball shoes to have cushioning units either in the front or in the back of the shoe, but this year's Kyrie 8 Infinity gets it in both spots. So you're going to have a zoom unit in the, in the heel kind of positioned in the back half of the shoe, which does feel good. But in the forefoot, you're going to get a zoom strobel setup that is just spring loaded. Like you can feel the compress with every single step and jump. It just feels so responsive and it protects your foot really well whenever you're landing from any type of jump. So the cushioning is something that I did knock a little bit on the Kyrie 7s, but they did do a good job to improve it here, which is nice. But now looking at the Kyrie 5 low, Nike goes with a top loaded zoom air unit that kind of sits under the forefoot, which is just going to be the front portion of the shoe. And these are meant to give you a quick burst and good responsiveness and the energy return is actually really good on these. I will say you aren't going to get quite as soft of a feel compared to some of its other models like you know the Kyrie 8s for example but I mean unfortunately I didn't get the chance to actually play in the original Kyrie 5 release so I can't really compare the two you know from a comfort perspective but stacking these up against the 7s and especially the 8s I mean you just won't get quite as much cushioning on this Kyrie 5 low but I still wouldn't call them uncomfortable at all it's just not going to be the selling point on that model. For the materials and the support, the Kyrie 8s go with what most basketball shoes use now, which is going to be some textiles. And there's lots of benefits to doing that, which is like keeping the shoe lightweight and breathable. And then in general, textiles are going to feel a little bit more secure just thanks to the plastic. And you're going to get some nicer materials on the back half of the shoe, kind of around that ankle. I mean, that black patch is going to have more of like a leather feel. And like I was saying, that's going to resemble the Kyrie 6 a little bit more than the Kyrie 7s, which were pretty much just textiles covering the entire shoe. And the support is another highlight on this Kyrie 8 shoe for a few reasons. So the upper doesn't really move on any hard movements and then these black straps are kind of run under the laces and then also around on the outside that the laces are feeding through. Those black wings kind of uh, resemble or like mark out a strap. It's going to run behind your heel, kind of tighten your foot into the shoe and then it's also going to run forward around your toes just to pull your entire foot into the design. You can kind of see where that strap is running actually on the toe box. There's like a little light blue line that kind of runs along that spot. So I mean Kyrie's line has never really struggled with support and that's going to continue on here. But now checking out the Kyrie 5 low. Like I just hit on, these did lose that big piece that kind of went over the laces. And that kind of did simplify the design. But you're going to have a few different materials at play across the upper. The toe box is going to be like a thinner textile. And then it's going to be a little bit more filled in around the white portion of the heel. And then in the gray spot and like that back side where the heel is actually at, it's going to be a little bit softer. It's not like fabric, but it's kind of got like a carpet feel almost. And the support is going to be really solid for a low top design. Like the heel structure makes your foot feel really secure once you got your foot all the way into the shoe. And the biggest 
lace help is actually gonna come from like those yellow flaps on the upper that the laces are feeding through. And tightening that just really makes your foot feel like nice and solid within the design. You won't be moving around much. So I did like that because, you know, in low top models, you're kind of just looking for anything that can maybe help with the containment, even if it's just a little bit. And I would say that the strap does that on these. So overall, the Kyrie 5 Low does hold up for both the materials and the support category. And then both of these shoes are gonna be extremely light. For a size 10 and a half, the Kyrie 8 Infinity is only gonna weigh 400 grams, which is definitely light for a shoe that's, you know, more of a mid-top design. And the Kyrie 5 Lows are gonna be even lighter at 372 grams, which, you know, is a little bit, little bit to be expected, like I was just saying, because you have a low top design, meaning there's gonna be less shoe overall to deal with, but that does make both of these models fun to play in. To finish off with traction, on the Kyrie 8s, Nike went with a data-driven traction pattern that has a better flow, in my opinion, compared to the Kyrie 7s, which was just a little bit too random for me. These are actually going to be pretty close to a traditional herringbone setup, and honestly, these play pretty similar to the Dame 7 extended play traction pattern, or at least that's as far as the look goes. They look pretty similar, so a few spots on the shoe kind of draw some comparisons there. But the outsole is going to extend a little bit from the inner, inner pattern, where like that lightning bolt design is. You can tell it's just kind of pressed into the shoe. And I actually bought a pair with an XDR outsole, which is just some more durable rubber so you know i am happy about that i wasn't really in love with how the traction played on last year's Kyrie sevens but i think it feels a little bit better on this year's Kyrie eight and then switching it over to the Kyrie five low nike continues to use those computer generated traction patterns here but i mean these are really similar to the Kyrie eight infinity setup like it has a lot of the same grooves you're going to see that same kind of lightning bolt structure there on the outer design i think it is going to be a little bit less grippy on this model though but it is still pretty nice like i haven't really had anything along the lines of slipping or there being like noticeable inconsistencies on the Kyrie 5 low. They felt up pretty well on my quick movements, you know, starting, stopping, all of that. But to finish off with sizing, I went true to size on both of these models, and I'd say they're both maybe a little bit narrow. The Kyrie 8s are going to be good for the length, though. The Kyrie 5 low is going to fit a little bit more snug, so keep that in mind. So for the final ratings and starting off with the appearance, both of these are just like some clean looking basketball shoes, in my opinion. So I'm going to start that section off with a tie. For cushioning, the Kyrie 5 low is nice, but the Kyrie 8s, they just have more cushioning kind of packed into their design. And you can feel that they are going to be a little bit softer, also going to be much more spring loaded. So I am going to go with the Kyrie 8s here. For materials, the Kyrie 5 Low is going to be solid, especially for a $110 shoe, but the Kyrie 8s are going to be a little bit nicer when you combine some of their features along with, you know, more of the premium feel kind of around that ankle spot. So I'm going to come back to the Kyrie 8s again. For support though, both of these shoes are really nice. You're going to have some wings and laces that kind of feed through both of these models, and it's going to give you a really secure feel. There's not really a clear way to lean. Neither uh, shoe is going to struggle here, so I'm going to keep that section as a tie. But to finish off with traction, the Kyrie 8s are barely going to edge out the Kyrie 5s here just by a little bit. I mean, you're going to get mostly the same traction pattern, but it's a little extra grippy on the Kyrie 8s from what I've felt. So that is going to lead to me going with the Kyrie 8 Infinity as the better shoe to hoop in. I really love the changes that were made to this year's Kyrie 8 shoe. I mean, they feel lighter, softer, a little bit better grip, just like some solid improvements overall. And the Kyrie 5 Low is actually a really good shoe to hoop in too. My only thing to really draw, draw out between this battle was like the noticeable difference kind of here in the cushioning. They're just not going to be quite as soft as the Kyrie 8, but it's still a really good shoe to hoop in for other reasons. Thank you guys for taking some time to watch. If you want to buy the Nike Carry 8 Infinity, just click the link here on screen, or we have links for both shoes down below or in our bio, so feel free to check that out. But until next review, I'm Landon from Shoeware. Peace.